Hey everyone, I want to play around a little bit with adding new columns into a Grade Center class and also thinking about how they are weighted with the rest of the course. So, here I am in a course where I have already created categories. I can see that under Manage. I'm just going to show you. See, here's all my categories. Ooh, ah. These are the categories for Fall 2010, by the way. They might be different for you. I've already weighted those categories by going to Weighted Total, Edit Column Information. There's other resources to show you how to do these things. I'm just showing you that, yes, this is where we stand. Look, there it is. It's all there. Okay, this is so great. Um, cancel that. I don't want to change it right now. So now let's make some categories, some columns themselves. I'm sorry. Um, as in, um, I go through the semester and I sign something to my students. Well, let's do some homeworks first. I'll create a column. Sometimes it takes a second. And I'll call this, you know, I, I like to start columns with the date. You don't have to. Um, I'll say on 826, you had to do, I don't know, a grammar exercise. Um, usually I leave a lot of this stuff the same. I do pay attention to the category very carefully. I want to make sure it's in the homework category. Let's say I give it 100 points. Submit. Now I have a category there, but wait, I don't have any students. Well, that's because this is actually a fake class. Let's make a fake student so that I can add someone to it. That is down here under Course Tools and Create Temporary Student. How easy is that, right? I just click it, and then shazam! There's all of a sudden a student named Ferris Bueller who was in this course. I can log in as that student if I want to um, see the course from a student point of view. That's not what I need right now. Right now, I just wanted to create the student so I have someone to whom I can assign grades. Hey look, there's Ferris, and now I can type here, give a grade for that grammar exercise. Um, let's say out of 100, I uh, got a 90, you know, very low A. Whoa, look at when I do that, it changes the total points and the weighted total points. Great. Let's keep going, this is fun, right? Let's say a little bit later, there's another homework assignment. This one is due on September 3rd, and it is a style assignment, you know, I'm, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, I'm going to put it in the homework assignment, but I'm like, you know what, this time, this homework doesn't really matter as much. It's not really as important. I'm going to give it 50 points. Um, doo -doo -doo. I know not everyone does it that way. I just want to show you what would happen. Um, this time, I give the student um, the full 50 points. Now, we notice what happened here, right? Under the total, it's saying, out of all the points you gave, you've gotten 140 of the possible points that you could have gotten so far. But that's not really very helpful. That number is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually, it's not going to make any sense at all. It already doesn't really make sense. This weighted total is what we really care about. Um, watch how, if I change this grade to a 100, the weighted total goes to 100, the total points there goes um, to, to 150. Um, let's go ahead and play around with adding something in a different category and see how this complicates things, right? Let's make another column for, um, let's say we're getting to the projects. Let's say I want to add project one, draft one. I'm going to put it in my project one category. Let's say it's only the first draft. I'm not going to give it, make it very important. I'll give it a 10 point grade. Excellent, right? Or not. Okay, there it is. It exists. Let's go ahead and make columns for the second and third drafts as well. So we've got something to play with. Project 1, Draft 2. Again, I'm going to put it in the Project 1 category. For kicks, let's make it 50 points. And then I'll make one more for draft three because it's that fun. Project one, draft three. I'll make this a hundred points. Kind of a big deal, right? It's the final, final draft. Now you may have noticed a big problem here is when I type long names there. The only way I, they all look kind of the same to me, right? If I hover over it it says up in this point 
what the actual name is, how many points it's worth, and you see it also comes up in a little hover box right there. Say that's annoying and I, I want to get rid of it. Well, I can always edit the column information and type a display name. That's the only time I bother with a display name is when the one that I typed up there is so long that I can't figure it out. It gets mixed up. Um, I'm not going to bother that with all of those right now, but you see how it affects things. Um, another thing, say I want to play with the order of these, I can do manage column organization. So fun. It actually is kind of fun. It's one of my one of my favorites. Um, and by clicking these things over here, I can drag columns around. Say I want all my homeworks to come after all of my projects. A lot of times I do this um, two or three times in the semester. I kind of regroup everything together. I can see the category here. All my project ones are together. All my homeworks are together. Excellent. That's really an aesthetic thing, right? It doesn't affect the actual grading at all. Well. Let's say for the first draft, it's a completion grade. Let's say Ferris um, did it, so I'm going to give Ferris a full 10 points. Excellent. Let's say for draft two, oh, really quick, you notice here the total points went up because now there were he's gotten 160 of all 160 possible points. But if that were like um, an eight, then it would be like, hey, you only got 158 out of the total possible points. Um, again, besides noticing that that's what that is, don't bother with the total column. It's the weighted total you care about. Let's say for draft two, the student got um, a high C. So in my mind, the, the way I do it is I think a high C, that's like a 78, but this column, you, you see up here, it's only um, worth 50 possible points. So how do I translate a 78% into 50 possible points? Well, I mean, what I do is I bring up my handy calculator, right? And I say 78 divided by 2 is 39. So I close that out and I say, okay, great. 39 points right there out of 50 is about a high C. Then let's say for the final draft, Ferris really pulled it together. Um, it did way better than a second draft and got it all the way up almost to an A to an 89. Oh, that's, that's so sad, right? Ferris could have done better. Well, I'm going to put the 89 in, hit it. Great. Now with e these two homeworks and these projects, right now Blackboard is doing its best to estimate that Ferris has about a 92%. Now the problem with that is that we saw in the weighted total column here that there are all kinds of other grades that need to be put in before it can actually tell you what Ferris's actual grade is. Um, you see that we have things in the project one category at 15% of the grade. We don't have anything in the discussion category yet, anything in the final reflection letter. Really, we only have two categories here. One's at 10%, one's at 15%. So right now, Blackboard is doing its best to guess. That's what calculate as running total here means. Um, it only includes items that have grades or attempts. It's saying, okay, based on what's there, um, we know that the uh, project one stuff should matter a little bit more than the homework. So we're going to do our best to um, put that all together and give you a number that estimates what the f student's grade is at this point. Um, sometimes that's important when you have students come to you and they say, why is my grade bouncing up and down like this? And you have to say, you know what, it's all in estimation. Um, let's look at what a little bit more of the math might look like. So the way I like to think of the categories is um, as ha being in different rooms. Let's say this room right here is the project one room, and this room over here is the homework room. And we saw in project one that we had a 10 point grade, we had a 50 point grade, we had a 100 point grade, um, and down here in homework, we had um, a 100, and then we had a smaller one at 50. Well, the way Blackboard does the math here is it thinks to itself, okay, well, in this grade, in this room, you have a total of 160 possible points. So it's like, how many of those 160 points did the student get? Same down here, right? It's like, well, out of this one, there were 150 total possible points. How many of those points did the student get? And then you know, whenever you take anything and divide it by something like that, you can turn it into a percentage. So this is going to give me some kind 
of a percentage of the possible points that the student got in that category. This will give me the percentage of the possible points the student got in that category, right? Um, maybe, maybe this is a, um, a 95, and this is um, an 85. I'm just making that up. That's not really what we decided on on the other screen. Um, so then, where the weighting comes in is it says, okay, this number, this Project 1 stuff, is weighted it's hard to write, right? Is weighted at 15% of the final course grade because that's what you set it up on. This one is weighted at 10% of the final course grade. But it's this number that it's translating, the percentage of how many possible points the student earned. Does that make sense at all? Um, the, the reason I'm telling you that is because sometimes when you have a million uh, columns here. When you've been adding columns, adding, 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 giving them different point values, um, your people might ask sometimes, well, wait a minute, why do um, some things matter, uh, seem to affect the grade in different ways? Like for instance, let's pull out a whole crazy new category. Let's say I give an in-class essay, and um, again I'm going to make sure it's in the in-class writings category. Let's say I only make it worth 10 points. You say, well, 10, 10 points, I mean, that's, that doesn't seem like very much. Well, in, in a way. Um, but because it's its own category, it's going to get compared to the other categories based on what the weighted total column tells it to do. Um, let, me, let me put that in another way. If I edit the information of this weighted total, which remember is the way that I look at what my weightings are, I can see that my in-class writings category is worth 10%, the same as the homework right now. Okay, so that means if I give that student a 9 out of 10, the way Blackboard does that math is it's like, all right, well, there's another category here, right? There's the in-class writings category and the student and there were 10 possible points and the student got 9 out of 10 possible points which equals 90 percent and now that 90 percent is treated the same as this 85 percent the same as this 95 percent and it's going to be weighted with those at 10 percent of the final grade because that's what I told it to do in the weighted total columns category. So do you see that um, this this thing right here where it turns a um, number of how many points they got possible into a percentage means that how many points you give an assignment only matters when comparing it within that color, within that room, within that category. So if I make a project one uh, if, if I make another homework grade that is like a five pointer or like a five hundred pointer, that really matters in the homework category, but it doesn't matter beyond the homework category because no matter what happens here, it's always going to turn it into a how many points did he get out of the possible points given and what percentage is that, and then take that percentage and weight it into a percentage to be weighted with the rest of the class. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Um, the practical thing is that it means only worry about your point value when comparing columns to other columns in the same category. That is a ton of detail and maybe more than you want. Good luck with it, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.